In today's episode, I'm joined by the host of Microsoft Mechanics and director of Microsoft 365, Jeremy Chapman, as we sit down and discuss the latest innovation to come out of Microsoft in terms of authenticating users to Microsoft 365 and Entra ID. And this will blow you away. Check it out. Learn with Andy Malone. Today's video is sponsored by Sprocket 365. Finally, create a robust knowledge base in SharePoint. For more details, visit them today at sprocket365.com. Hello, everybody. How are you? Great to have you on board. Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP. So nice to see you. Hey, in this episode, I'm joined by Jeremy Chapman, host of Microsoft Mechanics and the director of Microsoft 365 and Copilot. And we sit down and discuss something called Synced Passkeys. This has now just come into a public preview. And I got to tell you, it will rock your world when it comes to authenticating users in both Microsoft 365 and Entra ID. Super great technology. And we're going to look at it from both the user and the admin perspective and how to set it up and configure it. Now, uh, just to mention, by the way, I'm just recovering from a chest infection. Uh, and this is the reason why I re-recorded the whole intro and outro uh, on a different day, because basically my voice couldn't handle it. Now, just a quick mention that if you haven't subscribed, bump that subscribe button, ring the bell and come and join my learning community. And if you want more, then why not sign up to my Patreon page just down there and you'll get access to full Microsoft courses, monthly Zoom calls and so much more. So without any further ado, let me introduce my very good friend, host of Microsoft Mechanics and the director of Microsoft 365, my good friend, Jeremy Chapman. Hey, Jeremy, great to have you back. It's great to see you, Andy, and happy new year. It's a little, we're a little bit into 2026, but it's always an exciting time. I know people keep saying happy new year and I'm thinking, dude, that's so long ago, you know? <laughs> so... Today, we are talking about, it's just come into public preview, I believe. This is the syncable pass keys. Um, and I've actually been talking about this for quite some time. And I just realized that it actually wasn't in Entra ID. And it's great to see it in now. So uh, I believe you're going to give us a, a complete run through of how it works and what it does and so on. And... Uh, identity is becoming so, so important. Passwordless authentication, or more importantly, phishing resistant uh, passwordless mm -hmm. authentication. And Fido, of course, was out there at the very beginning of all of this. And it's really nice to see that it's evolved. And of course, Fido won with the physical uh, keys um, that were great. But now it's great to see that Microsoft have. Uh, succumb to, uh, I, I guess, a lot of requests from people out there for syncable passkeys. So can you tell us what yeah. they are and just a little bit of how they work? Right. So uh, like you said, the main thing is phishing resistant uh, authentication. I've got my my physical key here uh, as an example. But, um, you know, the main part, you don't want to have your your users yourself susceptible to token based attack or token theft for authentication or phishing credentials. Uh, if they're just simple passwords, especially which are easy to fish uh, as well. And then there are other other hacks for different multi factor authentication types as well. If you're using SMS text, for example. And so it's really about uh, being more resilient to those types of attacks. So when you think about like what that means from a user experience potential, if somebody is in a, in a phishing attack and you can see here that our Zava Inc. URL has been uh, creatively redone there with an L instead of an I, that means that the user's duped into signing in, the remote attacker might be able to grab their hardware token and now they, they will be able to use that. But if you if I try to use that with a passkey and it's trying to ask me for a passkey, it won't even discover uh, anything on the device that matches that URL or that address. So there's no way, even if somebody does try to steal something off of your local device, they can log in because they would need access to your physical phone or whatever is holding that passkey, that hardware. So 
that means that you're protected. So there are both device bound pass keys, which we've had in the past, as well as synced pass keys. And the sync pass keys are pretty cool because it means that you can set up one device, for example, in uh, iCloud, and then your Mac, your other phones will be able to inherit that. Same thing with password manager from Google, or if you're using other things like Bitwarden, for example, then you can even do cross device uh, synchronization of your pass keys if they're on different platforms even. So uh, those are using basically browser extensions to, to perform those types of tasks. Okay, that's cool, Jeremy. But what about the user? How does the user set this up? Yeah, so I mean, this is for your work account, mind you. So you're using the right tools within Microsoft Intro effectively to do that. So you're going to start out as you normally would in terms of adding sign-in methods. So you would go into your sign-ins basically through the intro portal. And when you add one, you've got different options here. And you can see that I have passkey with authenticator or passkey option. I'll go ahead and choose that one here. And I'm going to create a passkey on my device. In this case, I'm going to use an iPhone. So I've got an older iPhone in my case, an iPhone 10. And so when I scan in that QR code, it's basically going to take me to save the passkey in my um, iCloud account effectively for that device. And because it's a sync pass key with iCloud uh, keychain in this case, it will allow me to use that on other machines as well. So once I've done that, now the device is enrolled. So that means I can actually start using the device. So in that case, um, I'm using my, my older, like I said, an older um, iPhone 11 in this case, actually. And if I go in to then sign in with it, this is what the, the experience looks like. So now when I open up the Microsoft 365 Copilot app, it's going Going to ask me to type in my username, no password, and then I'll say I'll sign in with my face, uh, fingerprint, pin, or security key and choose my sign in with my pass key, and boom, I'm into the Copilot experience on that device. But it gets even better. So what if what if I want to use this then on my Mac? Because now I've got a sync pass key in this case that's using the cloud here. So with, with the keychain service, why don't I use my Mac? And what that experience then looks like is basically if I go to microsoft365.com, then I can just sign in uh, kind of with the normal path, the normal approach. When I pick my account here, you can see the account's already pre-populated. It already knows that I have a pass key. And so I can go ahead and do that on my device because it's now synced to the device because my Mac doesn't have the face ID, and in this case, it's got a fingerprint. I will use the fingerprint on the device, and then it will securely authenticate me in to the Microsoft 365 Copilot chat experience. So now I've securely logged in there. And remember, I didn't I didn't uh, enable the passkey on the Mac. I only enabled it on the iPhone. And then the last thing I'll show you because I think it's pretty cool. So what if what if I take and I want to I want to basically upgrade my iPhone 11 device to like the brand new iPhone 15 or 16 or 17 now actually. Um, I can do that too because it's being synchronized through that cloud service. If I want to um, get a new device like I've got here, then basically once I open that new device and I set it up for the first time, again, I just have to type in my username here. So I'll do that. And it already knows that I've got a synchronized pass key and then I can use my biometric on the device and log myself in securely with the sync pass key. So especially here where you're all part of the same ecosystem for devices, then it's super seamless to go from old iPhone to your Mac, to your new iPhone or your iPad, whatever the devices that you're using are. And it's, it's, it's you know very trivial to do that once you've set up the pass key for the first time and uh, you know, basically done the handshake against the synced uh, passkey service, in this case for iCloud Keychain. I was gonna say, and that's super convenient for users because I mean, if typically or traditionally, if a, a user lost their phone, it was a nightmare. They would have to go and get another phone, but here it's great because it's all backed up on the, on the uh, keychain, um, which again is super convenient, but it's also great for admins as well. On the subject yeah. of admins, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what's the experience like from the admin? Yeah, so from an admin perspective, uh, it's it's pretty easy to set up. I would say the, the unique part here is that you are, again, using non-Microsoft Entra services for the synchronization of the pass keys in this case. They're, they're happening, like I mentioned, through you know iCloud Keychain or through Google Password uh, Manager or through um, you know Bitwarden, for example. So you are using those services as the synchronization mechanism to move between the different devices. But inside the Entra portal, you know, it's 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 fairly easy to set up. I'll just walk through what the process is there and also what 
uh, what the different options are to set up pass keys for Microsoft Entra. So once we go into the authentication methods, we can see that uh, we have our different uh, method types. We click into passkey FIDO2. First, we need to enable it, of course. Then we can set up our different personas, all users, global admins, scoped admins that we have here. And so I've got, you'll, you'll see what these are. Like for uh, all users, for example, I can use both device and synced device bound and synced pass keys. And there are different profiles that you can set up. So if I click into the default passkey profile here, this is for, again, all users in an organization, for example, with some exceptions, then I can, if I want, I can, I can use both passkey types, like I mentioned, device bound and synced. If I want to enforce attestation, that might be for some admins or higher security roles where you want to use it maybe for break glass or just limit the types of keys that you are using, like using your, your, um, your hardware bound, device bound keys. And when you do that, it actually disables the synced pass key. And then from targeting of specific keys, if you don't allow all keys, which is kind of the default, you can choose the AA GUIDs or the, the different key providers that you want to allow. So these might be different OS platforms or authenticator apps or, or you know, synced passkey uh, engines that you want to support. And then, um, then you basically have full control over you know, what types of passkeys people can use and what services are permitted for synchronization of those passkeys. And this is the kind of the loosest, I would say, the, the loosest set of, of configurations to enable all pass keys effectively uh, device bound and synced for all users so that everyone gets fish resistant um, authentication and, and multi-factor fish resistant. But I can, for example, set up a like the, the admin profile if I want to as well. So let me just show you what that process looks like. So if I have limited providers in my case and I have just the device bound keys and I can set up the specific AA single AA GUID that I want, that means that only this provider will be supported. Like you said, if it's, it's break glass and I only want my Microsoft Authenticator service or something to be the only AA GUID that's allowed, I can do that and use a device bound key for those break glass type scenarios, for example, in those cases where I've got my my scoped uh, set of admins, global admins or something that I want to protect uh, even even and scope the protections down even further. OK, cool. So one question I've got to ask is um, how do I do a stage rollout then of pass keys? Yeah, so that's that's where you would use different user groups effectively to roll out uh, in, in stages your your pass key policies and profiles uh, for how you want to do that to get feedback to collect that to see like, you know, maybe you were you were scoping to certain targeted AA GUIDs, for example, and somebody wants to use something else and you want to allow that. And those are the kind of things that you'll you'll find through through testing and validation. Uh, as you as you roll this out, so yeah, there's there's definitely a way to do that using the right groupings of users. Okay, cool. And how easy is it just to revoke uh, a user's uh, passkey as well? Ultimately, that's going to happen if the user left the company or there was a change. Right, right. right. So there's there's a couple of ways to do that. You 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 can use per user authentication methods in the in the portal itself. There's also programmatic access um, over API or scripting. Uh, okay, so this is in public preview now. Yeah, yeah, we announced this. Mm -hmm. We announced this at Ignite. It's it's coming very imminently in terms of being able to use this uh, beyond kind of the preview markings uh, in Microsoft Entra. So this is something that you know it it's changed the way certainly that I've logged in across various services and devices. And I think syncable pass keys are certainly going to make the concept of FIDO a whole lot more um, available to Joe Public and to the regular user. And I think once they start using it on a on a daily basis, I think it's just a win-win situation. The cool thing with this is because people are using it in their personal lives and they're using it when they log into different shopping sites or other things, at some point they'll demand it, hopefully, in terms of a way to have secure authentication, especially if they have been victim to password theft or something in the past. Oh. No, I, I think it's going to be uh, really well received, you know. So there we go. Uh, public preview. Um, pass keys, syncable pass keys. Definitely check it out uh, in your Entra tenant today. Hey, Jeremy, I really appreciate you joining me today. Thanks so much. And again, apologies for my sickness. I'm, uh, I've got a bit of a chest bug at the moment, but I really appreciate your patience and your insight.
No, thanks for having me on. And of course, um, yeah, hope you get better soon with your with your cult. And um, yeah, if, if anyone wants to see other things that I'm doing, you can catch me at, at Deploy Jeremy pretty much on all the different social media platforms and on YouTube. And yeah, looking forward to seeing you there and also on Microsoft Mechanics. So once again, thanks so much to Jeremy. Always a great guy to have uh, on the channel. Remember, definitely check out his channel. It absolutely rocks and check him out on Microsoft Mechanics. That's it for this episode. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll catch you next time around. You take care.